Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to our hadith class. We are doing the kitab known as Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam al-Nabawi rahimahullah. And tonight insha'Allah ta'ala we are continuing on from the 197th hadith of this kitab. So without any delays let's begin. We've only got basically two hadith left for the completion of this chapter. But the one hadith is quite lengthy so let's see how far we go. So let's begin. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So hadith number 197, the 13th uh, hadith. عن ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أول ما دخل النقص على بني إسرائيل أنه كان الرجل يلقى الرجل فيقول يا هذا اتق الله ودع ما تصنع فإنه لا يحل لك So because it's lengthy we're going to do it bit by bit So Adrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه He narrates that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that إن أول ما دخل النقص على بني إسرائيل that the first deficiency and weakness that came upon Bani Israel was the following. A man would meet another one and he would tell him, A man would meet another one and he would tell him, Oh, so and so, fear Allah, leave this that you are doing because it's not permissible. In other words, a man, and in another narration, will clarify that uh, it's people of knowledge, in other words, the ulama from Bani Israel, they would come across a person and he was engaging in something which was haram. So he would come and tell him, yeah, fear Allah, you know, this is haram that you're doing, you can't do it, for example. And then, min al -ghadi. then what happens is, so he meets him, let's say, for example, Monday he meets him and he tells it to him. Tuesday he comes along. Wa huwa ala halihi. It is in the exact same position. So maybe, for example, uh, you came around the first time and there he was sitting and smoking. So you tell him, you know, fear Allah, you know, there's not permissible for you to smoke. And fine, he didn't stop or whatever, and you moved on on your way. The next day you came along and you found him sitting and smoking again. But, فَلَا يَمْنَعُهُ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ أَكِيلَهُ وَشَرِيبَهُ وَقَعِيدَهُ now you found him in the same state that you found him yesterday, but that did not prevent you from being his akil, his sharib, and his qaid. Akil means somebody who eats with him. Sharib means somebody who drinks with him. Qaid means somebody who sits with him. So he's engaging, he's continuing to engage in the sun, but now you sit with him as well. And if we really have to look in today's world, this is the situation that is affecting the people by and large to the point that people think going against this is anti-Islam. How often is it not that a person will say, you think you're holier than thou and things of this sort. But this is a demand of the Sharia. So, let's, okay, let's do the hadith first, the words, and then we can come back to an explanation. When these people, meaning these ulama of Bani Israel, when they start sitting, eating, drinking with these people who are engaging in sin, ضرب الله قلوب بعضهم ببعض. Then Allah put some of their hearts against others, which is another way that Allah united their hearts in their evil. ثم قال لعن الذين كفروا من بني إسرائيل على لسان داود وعيسى بن مريم ذلك بما عصوا وكانوا يعتدون كانوا لا يتناهون عن منكر فعلوه لبئس ما كانوا يفعلون ترى كثيرا منهم يتولون الذين كفروا لبئس ما قدمت لهم أنفسهم أن سخط الله عليهم وفي العذاب هم خالدون إلى قوله الفاسقون okay. so anyway. Uh, he, he said, uh, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the statement, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the following ayah, ayat at least. لُعِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ the, Those who disbelieved from Bani Israel, they were cursed. عَلَى لِسَانِ دَاوُودَ وَعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمْ They were cursed by Hadrat Dawood alayhi salam and they were cursed by Hadrat Isa alayhi salam. Why? ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَلُونَ The reason they were cursed is because they used to transgress, uh, they, they disobeyed and they used to transgress. They used to not prohibit the evil that others used to do. How evil is it that, uh, you know, what an evil thing that it is that they used to do. You will see many of them, 
this is all, all the, ayah, the ayat continuing on in this manner. So the you will see many of them. They befriend, they have their wala with the kuffar. That evil is that which uh, evil indeed is that which they have sent forth for themselves. In other words, by you associating and befriending the kuffar, it is an evil. It is sins that you are sending on. Like you send your good deeds ahead of you, you send your sins ahead of you, and your sins wait for you there. Unless, of course, you make tawbah and you. Uh, uh, desist from the evil that you're doing but otherwise you are sending your sons off to wait for you there you know you're sending your own killer to wait to kill you at the uh, finishing line so uh, uh, he ends the ayah he says Ila qawlihi, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited until uh, al fasiqun the ayah ends at that point then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke and said kalla Wallahi, let a muruna bil maruf, wala ten hawuna anil munkar, wala ta a huzuna ala yedi volim, wala ta a tiruna hu alil haki atra, wala ta suruna hu alil haki kasra. O la yodri banna lahu bi kulubi baadikum ala baab, thumala yella an thumala yella anena kum kama lanahum. So after making this statement and explaining what Bani Israel had done and reciting the ayat of the Quran that Allah had revealed in regards to that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now gives the directives to the Muslims and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Kalla, Wallah, that never, by Allah, you know, in other words, uh, I, tell, I command you by Allah, La ta'murunna bil ma'ruf, you will most definitely, com you should most definitely command uh, the good. Wala tanhawunna anil munkar, and most definitely you should prohibit the evil. Wala ta'akhudunna ala yadi al-dhalim, and you should grab hold of the hand of the transgressor, in other words, to prevent him from the... Uh, uh, the oppressor to prevent him uh, oppressing others and you will you should at least you should uh, like how how to put it that you will confine him and bring him on to the truth and the next part of the hadith puts it in but more of a perspective put it to a next level and you will take him and restrict him to the truth and only the truth, in other words, you will force, you will take him onto the truth by force. In other words, by force, you will stop him from the evil and the sin that he's engaging in. That's basically what the hadith is saying. Otherwise, oh, la yadribanna Allah biqulubi ba'adikum ala ba'ad. Otherwise, Allah will join your hearts with others, meaning you sinners with other sinners. Then Allah will curse you like Allah cursed them. In other words, Allah will unite your hearts in evil. You'll be one mess of evilness. You will be a mafia in your own right. You'll be your own uh, gang, so to speak. And then Allah will curse you the way Allah had cursed those ones previously. رواه أبو داود والترمذي وقال حديث حسن وهذا لف هذا لفظ أبي داود إمام أبو داود إمام الترمذي رحمهما الله ريبوست هذا الحديث and إمام الترمذي says the hadith is authentic and uh, this is the words of uh, from سنن أبو داود uh, now okay let's read the next piece and then I can just summarize thing one for, uh, once more ولفظ الترمذي the wording that إمام الترمذي رحمه الله reports قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم نبي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said لما وقعت بنو إسرائيل في المعاصي when بني إسرائيل when they fell into sin نهتهم علماءهم فلم ينتهوا the علماء prohibited them from the evil but they did not stop فجالسوهم في مجالسهم وواكلوهم وشاربوهم فضرب الله قلوب بعضهم ببعض so يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said that the the, the ulama prohibited them, told them, you know, what you're doing is wrong. But they, the people did not stop. So now the ulama also, they started sitting with them in their gatherings. They ate with them. They drank uh, with them. You know, in other words, if you've got a wedding, I'm there. If you've got uh, an event, I'm there also. You know, whatever going on, uh, the Maldives are there. So, فَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَ بَعْضِهِمْ بِبَعْضِ 
Didn't Allah put some of their hearts up with others? In other words, united their hearts. Then Allah cursed them upon the tongues of Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Isa alayhim salam. That is because they had sinned and they used to transgress. فَجَلَسَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ وَكَانَ مُتَّكِئًا Now while narrating this whole incident, Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم was lying down. And then Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم sat up and said, فَقَالَ لَا وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ حَتَّى تَعْطِرُوهُمْ عَلَى الْحَقِّ أَطْرَى Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم sat up. And sitting up was a, you know, like, if you're telling a story and then you stop, for example, maybe you're standing and you're speaking, not uh, focusing on anyone. And then you stop and you uh, focus your gaze on one particular person. In that it's like to give emphasis. So yeah, in this case, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to emphasize how uh, incredibly important this is, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat up and repeated the statement saying, Wallahi, we, la walladhi nafsi biyadi, that no, I take an oath by Allah, hatta ta'atiruhum ala al-haqqi atra, that you will most definitely, you should most definitely, uh, you know, grab them uh, uh, and confine them to the truth. Force him, restrain him, uh, you know, persuade him to follow the truth, to follow the right in our path and leave of the evil. That is a demand which is upon you. So that's the hadith, uh, two versions of the hadith. And now as far as the summary of the hadith goes, like I was saying, you see, you find it in today's world. Now you find, for example, you have a person who's a murderer of Muslims, for example, like in Kashmir. So the Muslims are being murdered and things. And then you find this one is having a wedding and Mink is there at the wedding and he's sitting over there. And then he was the one and he's telling you, you have to wear a mask, don't go to a masjid, you'll die on the carpet. And there he is at the wedding with people all over, nobody wearing masks and it's not an issue. Why? It's because their hearts has been united upon evil. And you can look around, uh, you know, anywhere in the world that you are. Just, you just have to look around. You will find that unity is difficult to find in general situations. But when people are on evil, that's when they are united. Although what I should say is that Allah tells us in the Quran, تحسبهم جميع وقلوبهم شطة, شطة, that you think that they are united, but their hearts are far apart. Now, the thing is that you look and you find every evil, misguided, deviant type, and they'll all be, you know, sitting there together, having united gatherings and things of the sort. And this one will be sending uh, Merry Christmas things and uh, wearing a Christmas hat and singing, uh, uh, you know, Christmas carols over there. And, well, we're part of the same jamiat, you know, so I can't do anything. No, it don't work that way. Today, that's why I said earlier, People today feel that this is Islam, that you might, you know, unity is important, unity is, no, the Sharia has put down a requirement of what is unity and what is not unity, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable, uh, for if you have a whole lot of, you have one gangster here, one gangster there, one gangster there, then you get them all together, you make one the head and the rest are all uh, his followers we've got a gang now you were just a normal thug you've turned them into a gang now they've got organized crime and you think that's good because there's unity so no unity has uh, limitations when evil is taking place there is not to be unity now the one i've explained that if the people are engaging in evil and sin and the, the normal man in the street continues to associate with them, then at the very least, the ulama are the ones who are supposed to abstain from such uh, places and abstain from such people. But now you find it, Jamiat so-and-so is there, uh, organization so-and-so is there, Molana so-and-so is there, Sheikh so-and-so is there. When a kafir is dying and there he is, they're burying him, and then some Molana must be there to also uh, give his uh, eulogy and, you know, read some Quran by the Qabr, uh, or at least I should say by the pit of Jahannam, and things of the sort. And then the excuses, it is for da'wah, it is for this. No. Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have given us guidelines and taught us what we are supposed to do and how we are supposed to uh, uh, react to things. But today people want to make it in their own way. Like this one uh, misguided uh, deviant, he says that, and he says, yes, admittedly, our imam of the past all were against Christmas. All of that, yes, you'll find it inside the, their books. 
Yes, and they said that it's kufr and all of the sort, but they say that was for them in those times. Today, he's, and this um, uh, Masnaida fool, he still says that it is mustahab. It's a requirement, in fact, the way he uh, emphasized there, that you should be sending Christmas greetings to, uh, to all the Christians, you know. And the Imam of the past were explicit on this point, so much so that the Imam said, uh, Imam Abu Hafs al-Kabir, rahimahullah, of the Ahnaf, he made the statement, he said, if a man was, and you'll find this, for example, in Radul Muhtar, you'll find this in Fatawa Hindia, and in other places as well, uh, from Imam Abu Hafs al-Kabir and other Aima, who, who made the statement to say that if a man worships Allah for 50 years, 50 years of your life you spent worshiping Allah, you're not 50 years old, you're probably 60 something years old, excluding the time when you were a child so you worship Allah for 50 years then you give to a uh, fire worshiper on the day of uh, Nowruz, Nairuz, which is the think of it as the Christmas you give them an egg one egg you read you know like uh, you honoring the day with them you know like hey it's your special day here's an egg or here's a candle you know or in today's time here's a Christmas present then it's mentioned that the person who does this becomes a kafir and 50 years of ibadah everything is gone in that one instance you you get in that one instant you gave one egg 50 years of ibadah is nullified on account of the fact that you became a murtad because of you becoming a murtad all of your good deeds are nullified so even though you may return back to Islam, you come back to Islam without any of those deeds. And that's an important point to also remember. It's not just the, uh, become kafir and come back again. You come back with your son. You don't come back with your good deeds. Your good deeds get lost the minute you become a murtad. So if you were worshipping Allah all your life and then in your 60s, you became murtad. Then, okay, a couple of days later, you re-accept Islam. He was basically starting from scratch, but not with a clean slate. All 60 years of sun is on your scale. All 60 years of good deeds has been wiped away. That's how serious it is. And that's the, why the Aima was so explicit and uh, emphasized it so much. But today it's like, why are you making a big deal about it? Uh, Al-Azhar is okay with it. Uh, you know, this one is okay with that one is okay with it. This one is sending his own personal greetings to the Pope and you know, archbishops and stuff of the sort. And you're like, where is Islam? So the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us that not only is it not uh, not only is it your duty to condemn it, you have to force the people onto the truth. And if they don't listen, then you must not associate with them. Today, like I say, if you're not associating with people, they think ah, you know, you're just a, a miserable person. Or you don't associate with people. Uh, or no, you have to mix with people so that you can fix them from the inside it doesn't work that way if the people are engaging in evil you can't be sitting alongside them it doesn't work that way it's not acceptable but people do it nonetheless and that is why we find ourselves in this situation where you'll find certain organizations jamiats uh you know things of the sort and they will be united but it's because they uh, find themselves united upon all the wrong things, the evil, the things that you are not supposed to be. You know, like I say, they give the example, the anything the Sharia said is impermissible. So let's say, for example, it's mixed weddings. But now, mixed wedding and you have, okay, Malana Sahib is there to conduct a mixed wedding. Malana is, Kari Sahib is there to recite Quran at a mixed wedding with the groom is dressed with a three-piece suit. The white, a woman is wearing a uh, long flowing uh, white Christian wedding dress. There's ma music or in their case, it's, some people think it's Islamic. They'll be playing Mahi Rezaen, uh, you know, musical uh, things of Mahi Rezaen. There's free mixing all over the place like this. Yeah, you know, uh, no hijab is a thing of the past and you know every kind of evil is taking place and then it's like hey you know i have you know if i'm there people will they'll start listening to me i can do nahi anil it doesn't work that way but like i said today people don't want to accept it but that is what the, the requirement of the dean is so if people don't want to accept it that does not mean you throw yourself into jahannam with them you do what you are commanded to do in the way that Allah has commanded you to do it. And beyond that, it is not your uh, issue. Now let's read the next hadith. It's a short one, and it will summarize finally and put everything in its perspective. 
the hadith number 198 the 14th hadith of this chapter عن ابي بكر الصديق رضي الله عنه قال يا ايها الناس انكم لا تقرؤون هذه الايه يا ايها الذين امنوا عليكم انفسكم لا يضركم من ضل اذا اهتديتم so from surah al-maida hadrat abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu he addressed the people one day and i spoke about the, about this hadith in one of my weekly audios a while back <coughs> in, in fact that hadrat uh, abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu was a, a sahabi who it's the greatest of people of the Anbiya Ali Musallatu Wasalam. But he's also the one who narrates very few ahadith. On account of the fact that, yes, he passed away early, and also on account of the fact that he had the greatest of tasks uniting the Ummah, protecting and safeguarding Islam after the passing of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when you find a hadith of Hadrat Abu Bakr, then you know that it's always okay, every single hadith is important. But you know, you see the importance. That Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu is the one narrating this uh, hadith, clarifying a, a point at least. I said, Ya Iwanas, O oh people, inna kum la taqra'oon hadhi al ayah. That verily you are reading this ayah, but what he is saying is, yeah, not you are reading the ayah. You're reading the ayah and you're misunderstanding it. You're getting the wrong idea of the verse. And what is that ayah? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum. Now, this ayah of Ya translates as, O oh, you who have believed that. You know, take care of yourself, look after yourselves. That, you know, those who have gone astray, they can't harm you if you are uh, and when you are rightly guided. So, as long as you're on the right path, ah, don't worry about others. That's what people were understanding. Today, even in fact, people understand the verse in that way that as long as I am not engaging in the uh, evil, hey, let love and let love. So Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, he then said, وَإِنِّي سَمِعَتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إِنَّ النَّاسَ إِذَا رَأَوُ الظَّالِمَ فَلَمْ يَأْخُذُوا عَلَى يَدَيْهِ أَوْ شَكَ أَيْ يَعُمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِعِقَابٍ مِّنْهُ رواه أبو داود والترمذي والنسائي بأسانيد صحيحة So Hadrat Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu, he said, you read this ayah and you misunderstand it. While I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying that in the nasa, verily the people, الظالima, if they see a, an oppressor, فلم يأخذوا على يديه, and they don't take hold of his hand. In other words, they don't physically stop him from his oppression. أوشك أن يعمهم الله بعقاب منه, then soon Allah will encompass all of them with a punishment from his side. Imam Abu Dawood reports this hadith, so does Imam Tirmidhi, so does Imam al Nasai, all of them with their own authentic uh, chains of narration. That's the end of this chapter. It's the end of that uh, hadith as well. And next week, inshallah, we'll start from the next chapter. We won't go on tonight. But you can see now, finally. And you know, you see the times even people read this ayah, even up until today, they think that if people go astray, hey, as long as you want the right path, that's all that matters. You only worry really about yourself. You hear the time and time and time again. Modernists push this out all the time. And you there are lots of people who actually think that this is the command of Islam. That uh, in fact, I've seen it my own self, uh, the first hand, people using this ayah to justify this type of thing that you know you must only concern yourself with your own sins don't worry about what other people are doing yet it's so serious that allah will encompass all of you in other words when allah sends the destruction it will destroy all of you you are not engaging in it but you will be destroyed too if you have not done nahi anil munkar that's what the hadith is basically telling a, a person so to summarize and finalize the issue Nahi anil munkar, amr bil ma'ruf, is something which is of the paramount importance. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim without doing it. And yeah, we done that the issues of amr bil ma'ruf, nahi anil munkar, the rules and regulations and limitations and stuff surrounding it, and all of that in the previous audios, which you can find uh, up on YouTube. But uh, nonetheless, the point being that if a person doesn't do amr bil ma'ruf and nahi anil munkar, and today people don't want to do it, they feel that, you know, it's like it. Uh, you are being judgmental, you know, who are you to judge, and things of the sort, then, you know, at the end of the day, if you are deemed and seen as being the mad, being the mad person, uh, the, the, the wet blanket, the one who doesn't get along with others, on account of the fact that you stand up for the truth and you prohibit the people from the wrong, and things of, the, of this sort, and they don't like it, 
tough luck. If you are not invited to weddings, tough luck. If, you know, people are like, ah, no, anyone but him, too bad. We have a duty that Allah has tasked us with. If we uh, uh, shirk our duty for the sake of acceptance of people, then a person is guilty of a form of shirk. And then on the day of Qiyamah, Allah will tell you, go to them and let, seek your reward from them. Not here by Allah, because Allah will, you know, uh, 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 ana ani shirk, as it's mentioned in a hadith Qudsi, that Allah says, I am the one who is most independent of uh, needing partners and things of the sort. So, uh, uh, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that Allah says that whoever does an action uh, wherein he associates a partner with me in it, then I leave him and he shirk. You know, take your shirk to, to that one that you, you know, for society, for the people, for the sake of being accepted. You know, if people accept me, uh, they listen to my advices. They, yes, nobody's saying you must swear them and insult them and things of the sort. That's in its place. And we discussed this previously in the laws of Amir bin Ma'ruf and Nahi'an al Munkar. But nonetheless, regardless of what, a person has to stand up for what is right and speak out against that which is wrong. Or a person will find himself linked with all of those evil people. And thus, if you don't go astray in this world, you will still be taken to task in the year after. So it's a serious affair. And yet it is seen as being not even light. It's seen as being something un-Islamic to do Amr bin Ma'ruf in Nahi'an al-Munkar and to abandon people or when they engage in evil. It's like, you know, you think you're better than others. You know, and things of that sort. So that being said, we end on this point for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah grant us understanding and make us people who actually follow what has been stated and taught to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we don't find ourselves also into these type of things. And later on, it is spoken about us that we were like this and like that. We were this evil person and that evil and things of the sort. But rather it should be that, you know, when a person dies and the earth cries for a person and the malaika welcomes a person and the qabr welcomes a person and it's all smiling you know they say you live a life where when you come into this world you are crying and everyone around you are laughing and you leave the world when you are laughing and everyone else around you are crying that's how it should be that way your life was lived in a correct manner in that you are laughing because everything is all the malaika and the, you know the goodness and acceptance in the alien and everything that's what you are seeing on account of the proper life that you loved rather than being the flip side of the coin the people are laughing haha finally he's dead good riddance and you find it uh, happening many times today so you know at the end of the day let us do the amr bil ma'ruf and nahi anil munkar and not fear the blame of the blamers and live our lives according to the sunnah and the commands of the sharia amin ya rabbal alamin until next time wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh